a little joke. This one's called the superstitious Eve. The superstitious Eve. Sometimes women are overly suspicious about their husbands. Well, when Adam stayed out very late for a few nights, Eve became upset. You're running around with other women, she charged him. Well, he said, you're being unreasonable, Adam responded. You're the only woman on earth. The, they quarreled and finally until Adam fell asleep, only to be wakened by someone poking him in the chest. Well, he opened up. It was Eve. He said, what are you doing, Adam demanded. I'm counting your ribs, said Eve. <sighs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the blessing that we have in Jesus' name to come to you before you on holy ground, knowing that as we finish up this series, God, I pray in Jesus' name that clarity would come to my mind, to speak what you have given me to bring to this church. I thank you so very much for every person that is here today, every person that is watching online. And Father, I pray in Jesus' name that there would be a transformation that takes um, way in our soul, a transformation that takes way in our bodies so that way we can understand that we are a spirit. Jesus looks at us by our spirit. We are righteous and truly holy in Jesus. And Father, I pray that as we walk through this soul detox in our life, it may not be an overnight transformation, but it will be a lifelong transformation that will lead to an abundant life here in this world. Heavenly Father, I thank you for that clarity in our hearts and in my voice. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, amen. Well, welcome to Revive Church. Again, my name is Derek Kerber. I'm the pastor here at Revive Church, where it's our mission to change lives, reach the next generation, and impact the culture. Can I get an amen? That's a good mission to have, right? It is part of the Great Commission, and we want to change people's lives. We want to impact the culture, and we want to reach the next generation, the next generation of leaders, the next generation of people that are going to rise up and you may feel like you're, you're too far gone where you can't rise up and do something, but you know what you can? You can pass the torch and raise up somebody who can. Can I get an amen that we need some Yodas for Luke Skywalker, amen? We need some people to stand there to, to, to raise them up, to walk them. We need some Samuels for Saul. We need some Samuels for King David. We need those people in our life to raise us up, to walk us through, and that to us is Jesus. He's the one that we look to for everything we need on this earth, and we're in this series called Soul Detox where we've been walking through the detox of our soul, just like where we eat way too much foods, whether they're sugary foods or acidy foods, whatever, or whatever it may be in your body, there's detoxes that we can take, whether you're sweating it out, working it out, or you're eating your way out by switching to veggies and going all of those little nasty little green things. But kids are here, so I'm going to say they're delicious for the moment. But God has changed me. I have been body detoxed by my beautiful wife. I was raised with a family of seven, and so to feed a family of seven, you can't always eat gluten-free and organic because it's a little expensive. And so I was was raised on all the good stuff, you know, pasta, all that awesome stuff, ground beef. We had ourselves some stroganoff. We had a lot of good things called mac and cheese. Come on, somebody say, what's up? We had some hot dogs, and it wasn't no Oscar Mayer full beef. It was the stuff that they swept up off the floor and naturally cased it. It was all the good stuff. Well, my parents were amazing parents, and they fed us all the great things like Swiss cake rolls and Nutter Butter bars and all those good things. So I was raised on that. And because I was raised on that, I had developed something that Cassie did not like. Can I tell you this much? I am totally transformed, but it took a long time. Whenever Cassie and I just started dating, she we were probably a year, two, three years into it, I believe. She had moved away to go up north and go to school. And so I went up and visited her, and she was making dinner. I mean, you know, I got excited because this is probably one of the first meals that she had cooked. So she just moved out of the house. She's now making herself some dinner. And I got myself up all the way to Burlington. My mouth was watering. She said, we're having chili. Can somebody say, what's up? I put some sour cream in it and some all these good Frito tortilla chips. And I got there. And I opened up that kettle, and I found things that I have never seen in Chile in my life. <laughs> never seen, like, there, there, there was stuff like corn, and, uh, and there was stuff like, I don't know what else you put in it, but it was, there was no meat in it whatsoever. It was a veggie chili. Yes. You guys are horrified just as much as I was. <laughs> No, it's how, like I said, she has detoxed me. I love myself some brownie cookie Sunday ice cream every night. It's okay, every once in a while, no, every night. But I'm telling you, she has transformed me. I didn't eat fruit before, but now I do. I did not eat vegetables before, but now she makes some of the best dishes I've eaten in my life with couscous, kidney beans, black beans, and some great old-fashioned ranch dressing. Can I get an amen from the house of God? I'm going to wake you guys up this morning or make you hungry, one of the two. 
And so we're talking about a soul detox, not a body detox, a soul detox. I mean, the Bible says in, in, in 3 John 2, it says, I beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. And so in order for us to see the will of God in our life where our body and our finances are prospering, we need to be prosperous up here. Because can I get an amen? We're a spirit. We possess a soul, and we live in a body. And Andrew Womack teaches it this way, where you have your spirit is the well that God has placed on the inside of you. It's the river of living water that never runs dry. It is the well that when you drink of it, you will never thirst again. Can I get an amen? God has put that Holy Spirit in your spirit and has sealed it. But your soul is right in the middle. It is that teeter. That I talked about last week. It was the, the center of the balance where you can have more of the spirit or more of the flesh. Well, you're not going to experience the spirit in your flesh, whether it is physical or whether it is financial, unless you turn on the faucet of your soul to release the spirit of God into your body. Can I get an amen, church? I don't have time to explain that. I want you to go back over the last three weeks and listen to all three weeks, but we need to understand you've got the goods. Can I get a real good amen, guys? You've got You don't need eight sessions of counseling, even though some of us may want that and some of us may need that. But you need to realize you've already got what you need on the inside. God has taken and opened up a bank account with your name and deposited everything that you need in that bank account. All you need is to write the check. That's all you need to do. And so many people are trying to cry out to God and God, I need more. I want more and and all of this. And I understand we want a fresh outpouring. That's okay. But what you need to understand is you just need to start maybe changing your prayer a little bit. Instead of asking for a fresh outpouring, ask God for a fresh revelation on what you already have. Can I get an amen? You need a fresh revelation of what you already have. Rather than trying to find something new, maybe you need to just thank God for what you already have in Jesus. And so a soul detox gets you from trying to reach out for more of God. It, I'm not sorry, that was worded really wrong. Instead of trying to reach out to find something new from God, it is a detox to realize how much you've already got from God. We've got it all, guys. We really do. And that's what this whole series is about because we look at all the issues of our life. We look at all the problems of our life. We look at all of the generational stuff that gets passed down from our parents and all the stuff that they've allowed in the house and all the things that they allowed happen to us, what we need to do is realize those are things. Can I get an amen? They've happened. You can't stop them from happening. But what you can have is break the power of it over in your life. You can break the power of that for the cross and the body of Jesus Christ. And before I go any further, I want to give all honor for this series to Live Church and Pastor Craig Rochelle because I was reading a book that he had that's called Soul Detox. This is actually, a lot of this content is based off of his book that I have taken, re- remanufactured it to my belief system because he's a little Southern Baptist for me. And so I took it and I just changed a few wordings instead of asking God to forgive me. I thank God for forgiving me, that kind of stuff. Not asking God to set me free, but thanking God for setting me free, those types of things. And so I want to give all the honor to Craig Rochelle for putting this together. And if you have not read Soul Detox by Craig Rochelle, it hit me like a ton of bricks. And that's the reason why God has been transforming my life, even over the last couple months of reading that book and dissecting it and going into the word of God about what our soul really has to do in our life. Because our mind, our will, and emotions are the playground of the devil. They're the playground of the devil, but it determines what happens in your soul is what you're going to see in this life. And God wills for the spirit to break through and to break down all of the walls that the devil has built of those strongholds in our soul so we can be set free by the power of God in our life. Can I get an amen? Church. We've talked about the restless soul. We've talked about the heavy soul. We've talked about the tortured soul. We just basically have walked through and then laid out to you different types of things that happen with people, whether they have restlessness in their soul, the kind of person that just can't find fulfillment, who's always looking for something new to fulfill them, who's always looking for a new job, who's always looking for a new um, hobby, who's always looking for a new thing to buy, and the restless soul is always searching but never finding fulfillment. They're always looking for something that only Jesus can fulfill, and you know it. You've seen the young people. You've seen the people in this world that cry out to alcohol. They cry out to drugs. Some cry out to pornography. Some cry out to just wanting someone to talk to them. They're looking for someone else's esteem in their life, and they're using that to fulfill something that only Jesus has the key to fulfill. It's a hole in our heart that only can get lined up by the Word of God and Jesus being placed there, and the restless soul can be healed by that. And All of these different things, whether it's a heavy soul and you're dealing with anxiety and depression or even the tortured soul, and when we're talking about the tortured soul, it's like, what tortures us? What tortures us? What keeps us up at night and, and makes us think about all day? 
Is it your past sin? Is it the present struggle? Is it the future anxiety about what could happen? And we talked about those things. But in all of this, we talked about what fixes those conditions of our soul, what fixes the restlessness, what fixes the heaviness, and what fixes the torturedness of our soul. Like last week, we talked about the tortured soul. We're tortured by things that we've done. We're tortured by lies that we believe. And the two ways to get healing from a tortured soul, if that's you today, the number one thing that you can do is to confess your sins, not hide them. To confess your sin and not hide it. When you confess your sin to God, you're, you're, you're releasing that weight from you. When you confess it to others, you're receiving forgiveness and healing from them as well. I mean, the, body, the Bible says in James 5, it says, when you confess your sins one to another, he is faithful and just to forgive you, and you'll find healing in that. And so what we want to do with everybody in this room is we have groups in this church. We just finished up a semester of our spring, and in the summer we have outreaches all over the place. So we cry out to the church, ground us up together so we can go out into our communities. And this fall we start some more semesters of groups. Those aren't just for you to go and have fun cooking. They're not for you to go have fun playing volleyball and the health and fitness. They're not just to go and do the activity. It's to connect with people because it is with people that God will for us to bring healing together because life is better together. Can I get an amen from the church of God? We need people surrounding us and we need people that have an inroad into our life that are able to speak into our life. But if you don't allow those people in your life, you are going to be stuck in a situation for the last 20 years. You're not going to get out of it unless you start talking to somebody and have them help you walk through that. That's what these groups are all about. That's what they're all about. And we confess our sins to people. And number two, Christ has that's one of the things that I changed is Christ has set you free. Jesus ain't dying again. He's not coming to this world again. What Jesus did, he said, it is finished. Everything you need was done and healed at the cross. It's up to us by faith to believe what Jesus has already done on the inside of us, in our spirit, to be released into our bodies and into our souls. Amen, church? That is a reality that we need to understand. It's not crying out to God for healing because it says, by his stripes I was healed. 2 Peter 2.24. By his stripes we were healed. We need to realize that thing in our life where we're going to live defeated, crying out for something that's sitting right in front of us. Have you ever messed up and called Amazon because they said it was delivered, but it's not there? But then you found out that they didn't put it at the back door, they put it at the front door underneath the bush. Somebody kicked it off the porch and it fell next to your rutabagas or something. I don't know. But it was there. It was there. And you're complaining to God, Amazon, about something that they already delivered to you. You just couldn't find it, and it was right there in front of you. We need to realize what we need is already here. We don't need greater church services. We don't need greater strategies. We need a revelation of the cross that has already been completed. What I told you about last week is so many people, why are they broken? Why are they hurt? Why are they crying to God because all of these issues are coming up in their life? You know what the Lord had told me? I told you this last week, but I'm going to say it again. It's because we have lost the simplicity of the gospel. So many people in religions try to tell you, and even this at the conference we heard this last week, um, one of the pastors, Dino Rizzo, who's an awesome man of God, was teaching, had a little church 20 years ago for 20 years, and uh, he was teaching on John 3.16 for five weeks straight. John 3.16. One guy in his church came up to him and said, well, guys, can, can, are, are we going to get off of John 3.16? Because can we get out of the kiddie pool and go in a little bit deeper? I mean, no, you can't get any deeper than John 3.16. So many people want something new. They want something fresh. They want something this when they're losing the simplicity of the foundation that God has already set. You can't put the roof on, guys, without the foundation being there. Can I get an amen? And the foundation is in Jesus and in Jesus alone. That's why when we sing the song, holy ground, chains fall, fear bow. Jesus, you change everything. It's not eight services a day that changes everything. It's not this. It's not that. It's not eight counseling sessions over one week. It is Jesus that changes everything. Is counseling good? Absolutely. Is talking to your friends good? Absolutely. But only one that's going to build his church, sustain his church, and grow his church is Jesus Christ and him alone. And we need to realize Jesus has, Christ has set you free. Turn to your neighbor and say, I am free. I am free, guys. We are free. Now this week we're going to be talking about the seduced soul. 
And all these sound really scary and seduction and that whole thing. I'm not talking about Bathsheba with David or, 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 or Samson with Delilah. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the seduction in which we have to cheat on our Heavenly Father. To run away as the bride of Christ from the one that we're married to, and that is Jesus. The seduction that we have in this life, whether it's something that's right in front of you or something hidden deep down in our soul, it's a seduction that draws us away from God. And it is what I'm talking about, putting up little G's in our life, little gods. Little gods that exalt themselves above the name, above all names. Little things that make us worry, little things that keep us up at night. It's called worrying about money. If your mind is always focused on money, maybe you've got a little bit of a seduction problem to money. Whether you've got a lot of money or a little money, I don't care. You can still have money problems whether you, if you have a lot of money. Can I get an amen? The seduction of our soul. The, sedu- the soul is seduced into settling for a substitute rather than the Savior. We in our lives are so easily seduced by the things of this life. I talked to you last week about self-medicating. Whether it's sitting down and just unwinding in front of the TV, and I'm not against that. I have Netflix. I don't have cable, but I have Netflix. And so we watch TV. But it's not the thing that I use to self-medicate to unwind at the end of the day. It happens when it happens. We watch Netflix. We, some of us, we self-medicate with a, an extra drink a night. Some of us self-medicate with trying to talk to too many people about our problems. But guess what? They want to talk about something else rather than you every once in a while. Can I get an Amen. We have these things in our life where they seduce us and get us to focus on, and and you know what? A lot of us are seduced by the God of me, myself, and I, rather than the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We get seduced and always thinking about ourselves and forgetting that God is right there with us. We do. I don't know why I shut that. I really don't. It is dry up in here. It's hard to sing and play and then preach, but I'm going to do it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. I can do all things. I got a little Dave hitting in me. Through Christ who strengthens me, and I can move mountains and cast them into the sea. I don't know any more than that, so let's keep going, all right? Let's go to Exodus 23 through 4. It says this, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the waters below. Huh. Hmm. Can I get an amen? This is a statement that I have right here. That the soul is created to connect with God and to worship God. Every single one of us is created to worship our Heavenly Father. Every single one of us has been created to worship a greater being, a greater power, and His name is Jesus. Can I get an amen? What happens is why Jesus came and said, go to all the world. I ain't coming back until you bring this message to everybody. Because that is the thing that the world needs the most. They need it. When they want it, they just don't know what it is. They think Jesus is found in Jack. They think Jesus is found on the internet. They think Jesus is found in the car that they drive, but Jesus isn't found in a cross. He isn't found in the tomb. He is found on the inside of our hearts, and he's seated at the right hand of of God in heaven. The soul is created to connect with him. Our lives are meant to worship a greater being. Our lives are meant to worship a greater power, and his name is Jesus. We always have these people, whether it's our neighbors or our family members, that are hurt and so broken so powerless against situations. And we've got the goods that we can bring them. We've got the message of Jesus Christ that they need. And let me tell you this much. They want it. They want it. I don't care how much they say no. They want it. They need it. And they desire it. They desire the peace that we have. They desire the prosperity that we have. They desire it. They want it. We just need to bring it to them. We need to bring it to them. We need to detox our soul so that way we can be the hands and feet of Jesus on every area of our life. Can I get an amen that humanity hasn't changed? There's nothing new under the sun. Right after after Exodus 20, God says, you shall never have any gods before me, and all of that took place. Can I get an amen that had a temptation to worship something else? You want to know why? Let me read this other scripture here before I go into it. I think it's in the next page here. Let's go to Deuteronomy 4, 16. Deuteronomy 4, 16 through 19, it says, it says this, so do not corrupt yourself by making an idol of any form, whether of man 
Oh, that's a good one. Or of woman. Don't idolize preachers. Don't idolize famous people. And an animal on the ground or a bird in the sky, a small animal that scurries along the ground or a fish in the deepest sea. And when you look up to the sky and see the sun, moon, and stars, all the forces of heaven, do not be seduced into worshiping them. You want to know why God said that? Because they came out of a culture that worshiped everything and everything. Egypt was a culture that if it moved, it was a god. Whether it was the pharaoh or it was the sun or it was the river or if it was a good crop, they worshipped the sky, they worshipped the stars, they worshipped everything. They worshipped everything that they possibly could see, think, and they put all the credit on something that is dead. They put all the credit and they were seduced into worshiping something that is dead. And God made it a point at the culture of the day when the world was telling them to worship the sun, when the world was telling them to worship the moon, when the world was telling them to worship the stars, he said, do not worship it because they are dead. Worship the only one living and true God who is alive yesterday, today, and forever. And I got a message for every person in this room. The world might not be telling you to worship the sun, moon and stars, but it is telling you to worship yourself. It is telling you to worship your kids. It is telling you to worship your addictions and all the problems that we have in our life. But I'm coming to tell you that we are not to worship those things. We are to worship the living God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Don't get seduced because your kids can become a God. Trust me. I've seen it break marriages apart after 20 or 30 years. The kids were gone because they were the God and now they have nothing to hold on to. People worship the activities that the kids do on a Sunday rather than bringing them to church and be an example. They're seduced into going to different things on a Sunday rather than prioritizing and showing their kids that we come to church. That we come to church. Now, this is two weeks in a row. I can't preach us and not confess my sin. I want to know. I'm just kidding. It's not a sin. But my kids haven't been here the last two weeks because they've been out with family doing other things. And so do I think it's a sin for you not to go to church? Absolutely not. But I want you to prioritize it. I want you to prioritize that. Not for me. Not for the church to be filled. You might be thinking that he's just a pastor. He wants his building filled so we can get a good tithing offering so we can do this or whatever he wants with it. Absolutely not. You know what I just told you about James 5? We confess your sins one to another. You can talk to people. I already had somebody this morning catch up with me and was telling me about some of the problems and was in tears right in front of me. And they were finding healing in Jesus' name because they came to church today. You ain't going to find that on Facebook. You ain't going to find that on Insta Twitter. You ain't going to find that on nothing. You're going to find it in Jesus' name. I know it's Instagram. Come on. I'm just making a joke here. It is called Come to Know Jesus. Put it a priority. Put it as a priority. Sunday morning, kids, we ain't playing football. We ain't going to camp. We ain't doing this. We're going to church. Can I get an amen? Even when I go on vacation, we love going to church. Can I tell you a little quick story? When Cassie and I had just gone to Florida, we were able to have the opportunity and the fulfillment to go to a church out there. Because it's very nice to be able to walk in like some of us and just not have to do anything. Just sit down, relax, and let Jesus speak to you. Because it's amazing. It's amazing. And so I walked into this church. It's this really big church. We had, like, picks between 100 different churches, and we finally picked this one. And we get there. It's this big church. It's, got, it's like one of the fastest-growing churches in Orlando or in the America, whatever. So we walked in, and, and uh, we, we do our thing. We drop the kids off. They give us a newcomer's bag. And then we, 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 we walked in, and the usher brought us all the way to the front row, three seats left. My sister, my wife, and I, we're sitting right in the front row. And so I'm enjoying myself. I'm taking videos of the drummer. I'm taking videos of the worship. I'm taking a selfie with everybody behind me and say, look at me. I'm on church on vacation. And I didn't go on vac- church on vacation because I needed to. I went because I wanted to. You know what happened? When we left, that, that, the, the preacher preached, did his thing. It was a good message. And we had a good time. And we left. And he was out in the foyer by the end of it. And as we were walking, I'm just following. I'm just got my head. I'm looking around at the buildings, and I got to lead because my wife is leading me, and I'm just stuck looking all around like a little kid in a candy shop. Like, wow, wow, they've got lattes here. Wow. So I'm running around, and all of a sudden, my my wife and my sister were leading. They ran into the pastor who was in the foyer. He saw the newcomers back. He came up to us. He talked to us. And this guy's a pastor of six thousand members of the church. And I got to talk to him just because I ran into him by chance. And he said, "New England? You're from Vermont? I love New England. I've never been there. I've always wanted to be up during the foliage." He said, "If I can fit it into my schedule, and you can fit it into your schedule, I would love to one day come and preach at your church during the fall." And that would have never never happened if I hadn't gone to church. You see, there's God appointments in places that you're not showing up to. 
There's God appointments in places, and you know what? God wants to do something, and you ain't listening. Can I get an amen? amen. So I would encourage you. You've got a seat next to you. The weather is nice out, so people are out enjoying it. It's up to us to fill it maybe with new people. Let's just bring in people to reach people for the gospel's sake. Amen? Amen. Don't get seduced into worshiping church. I don't know where this is coming from, but I'm going to go somewhere with this. Don't worship church. Worship Jesus. You know what I'm telling you. Don't worship church. I've got a problem with this, and I do. I'm going to be sincere and honest with you. I like it when things run smoothly. Can I get an amen? Because I'm a pastor. I like when things run smoothly. And when things don't, there's something that rises up on the inside of me that gets upset because it didn't go the way that I had planned and the way we had scheduled and tried it to go. But there are some things in my life that I just need to let go and let God. And just because something didn't turn out the way they want, just because the seeds aren't filled the way that I want, just because we aren't seeing the people come to know Jesus the way that we want, doesn't mean that Jesus isn't being glorified. Because when I preach in Jesus' name and preach that Jesus is Lord, he is being glorified and his name is being preached no matter what. I had a good talk with Lou this last weekend, Pastor Lou, and he was telling me about what, who, even if people aren't coming to church physically, we're reaching them in live stream. We're reaching them in live stream. And I'm not telling you guys to stop coming to church and watch on live stream because you're not going to get what you can online, what you can here. You're not. And I'm not trying to bug on anybody. I'm going off script. I don't know what I'm doing, but Jesus is good. Amen. I'm not trying to, to force you to try and come to church if you don't want to. And I'm not trying to condemn you while watching this online. But I wanted to encourage you by the charge of the charge of the most holy God. This is the place where you want to be on a Sunday morning. If you want to prioritize God in your life, this is the place to be. And I don't care if it's in this church, but you got to get yourself into a church, a Bible believing church that will tell you that you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. And Jesus lives on the inside of you. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You have everything that you need. You need a church that's going to tell you that. And I don't care if you tie to this church or come to this church, but there are people watching right now that need to get to church. Amen? You need it. And I'm just, I'm excited about the local church. This last weekend I got fired up. And I'm probably not even going to preach my notes, but I don't care anymore. I got fired up this weekend. Because a shift that is taking place in New England. Can you guys see that Vermont is the least churched state in all the, the United States, right? Guess what was number one last year? New Hampshire. Or number two last year was New Hampshire. Yeah, you know what? I know what? New Hampshire's got some good church. They're like 10th on the list now in one year. God is bringing revival. There was 1,200 men at this men's conference in New Hampshire this week. God is doing something big in the Northeast, guys. Are you with me to get this done? Our kids are going to look back in the history and see the Azusa Street revival all over again. They're going to see a Billy Graham rising up in New England, not just one, not just two, but multitudes of people planting churches in New England like this church that are gospel preaching, that are life-giving, so people will want to come and worship Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen? God is doing something big. And it is my goal that I am going to share with you and my vision that I want Vermont off the top of that list. I want Vermont to be the number one church, and I want the Bible Belt. I've been preaching this to you for years. The Bible Belt in Jesus' name is going to have a shift in Jesus' name. It is moving. It is coming up. The Canada line, and we can reach Canada too. I don't care. We're going to reach the world in Jesus' name. The number one thing that we need to do to dethrone the idols of our soul is you need to identify the idols of the soul. You need to dethrone them by identifying them. Whether it may be, you need to understand. You need to understand that there are some idols. And I don't remember the story, so I'm not going to preach it, but you need to understand. Sometimes an idol, like I was just telling you, was our kids and making sure that they have all the opportunities, bringing them to this fashion show, bringing them to this place, bringing them to that place on a Sunday morning when there's six other days in the week to do it. And I want to encourage you, give up your weekends by going to church because God will bless it back to you and he will bring every minute that you serve is a seed that you're planning for God to bring it back to you. It is supernatural. How many givers do I have in the house that have given and seen God supernaturally bless them? Supernaturally bless them. Where you've given something where physically it would have been impossible for you to be supplied for. And on the other side of your faithful seed, God saw you through and abundantly supplied back for you. I'm telling you, that's the same thing with your time. When you give, God will abundantly bring back to you the productivity that you need. Whether you've got it, maybe you're an idol is a debt over your head. Where you're just, I mean, it's a good to have focus on getting a debt paid off, but you're always worrying about that debt. 
whether you got left a debt by your by by someone that deceased or whatever it may be, but you're you're idolizing that debt because you're constantly thinking about it. What did I tell you last week? What did I tell you? Give it to God. God, you've got a problem. This debt ain't mine. Can I get an amen? That, that the debt that he paid for you wasn't his, but he paid it anyway. Now you've got a legit debt that was your problem that you did, and he'll still take care of you in Jesus' name. Amen. We've got time, we've got money, we have conversations, we have gossip that people um, analyze. And you can't, you can't get into a conversation without talking about, hey, girlfriend, did you see what they said? Did you hear what they did? Did you see that post on Facebook that they put? Was that for me or was that for somebody else? I'm going to keep on moving. All right. Maybe a God to you is people's opinions. Maybe you're the kind of person that won't make a move unless you know if someone else approves it or not. We're not able to walk by faith because you need someone to approve you. And I'm not talking about a mentor to walk you through it. I'm talking about somebody else or you go to multiple people and the only way for you to make that decision to walk by faith is if everybody believes in you. Let me tell you this much. If God believes in you and you've got a good mentor that believes in you, get it done in Jesus' name. Don't be moved and stopped by people's opinions. Don't do that. Let God be God and not their opinion. And number two, what you need to do is identify the idol and then tear down the idol. You need to let righteous anger rise up on the inside of you. Whether you've got a problem with lust, whether you've got a problem with spending too much, whether you've got a problem with with anger, with depression, with anxiety, you need to allow righteous anger to rise up and demolish that idol that is in your life. You need to break it down and break the power of it in your life. Break it. You got to break it. You got to demolish it, crush it, and don't tolerate it. I told you last week about that little puppy that we allow, and that puppy is the problems in our soul. That little puppy that we think is so cute, but it's peeing and pooping all over our furniture and ruining our house. Stop tolerating the puppy that is ruining your soul. Stop tolerating it. You need to rise up and tear it down. Oh, this weekend was so much fun. I could go into so much. Some of the messages that they had preached and talking about uh, situations that we get ourselves into and and, and different stuff, and I could go on forever, but I just don't have time. I'm not going to do it. But we need to tear down the idols of our soul. Don't tear it down. And don't make a deal with the devil. What the devil sometimes will try to do is if he can't go get you to go all in, he'll let you put your toe in it. And then by the next time you have your foot in it, and then your ankle deep, and then your I can't go down any further, but then your knee deep. And then by the time you know it, you all know that song? It's a slow fade when you give yourself away. And it is because of an idol that we have set up in our life that was not an idol before, but yet the devil keeps give, taking and taking and taking. By the time you're in it, you're too far gone, and it takes a Jesus to get you out. Can I get an amen? We need to tear down those idols. Some of us, an idol is a relationship. Whether you've been single for so long, when you've been going from person to person to person to try and find fulfillment. And I may be preaching to someone here, or I may be preaching to someone who is online, where you're trying to go from person to person, whether it's a guy or a girl, and none of them are fulfilling you, and all of these relationships are ending up in breakups, they're ending up in bad breakups, they're ending up in problems, and you're trying to find fulfillment in a person. But my thing is to you, when you lose yourself, that's when you will find it. Stop looking for fulfillment in a man, stop looking for fulfillment in a woman, and find fulfillment in Jesus. Christ and him alone. Amen. And if you're having problems having Facebook as an idol where you pick it up and you can't put it down because it's so addictive, maybe shut it off. Delete the app on your phone. I'm getting real deep with some people. I'm not going to be real preachy today. I'm going to break down these idols because some things need to be said in church. If you have a problem with pornography, guys or girls, because it's rising up in women as well, delete and get rid of the internet on your phone. Delete everything you possibly can. Set up guidance where people are monitoring what you're doing. If you've got idols in your life, do not tolerate it and try to walk alone by tearing it down by yourself. Get yourself together with your spouse. Get yourself together with a friend. Get yourself together with a mentor, a brother, or a sister to tear down the idols of our soul. And if you're willing to make that decision today to break down those idols, I can guarantee you God's life in you will shine and you will see fulfillment on all levels. Tear it down. Turn to your neighbor and say, tear it down. Tear it down. Guys, we need to tear them down. Now the remedy. What's the remedy? We've talked about all the 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 causes and the things in our life that are seducing our soul. But what's the remedy for a seduced soul? And here it is. Fill your soul with God. 
Fill your soul with God. Amy, you can come up now and do your thing. In Psalm 84, 2, it says, My soul yearns and even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. In Psalm 107, 9, it says, For God satisfies, he satisfies the longing soul. The hungry soul he fills with good things. And in Psalm 42, 1 through 2, it says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. You see, every one of us has a soul that needs a Savior. We have a soul that needs to be filled up with the Spirit of God. We have a soul that is in need of transformation, not by my power, not by my might, but by His Spirit, says the Lord. It's a transformation that only He can do, but He can only do it with your obedience. He can only do it with your submission. He can only do it with your acts of discipline to reach out to Him. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you don't even know. Show you great and mighty things that you don't even know. It is a soul that longs for God and it is only God that can fill that longing in that soul. The psalmist, as they write this, may have been in turmoil, may have been in lack, may have been in a situation that many of us find ourselves in. But it's that longing for God that keeps them. It is a longing for God that keeps people in ministry. It's a longing for God that keeps people on the way, on the path, following God. We heard a statistic this weekend that 15 to 1,700 ministers quit the ministry every single month. Not every year every month and to me that's disheartening and every time I go to Marcus with an issue or a problem where I'm feeling down I needed someone to talk me through guys I can't talk myself out of a problem I can't talk myself out of a wet paper bag it just ain't gonna work I have to go to a brother that I love and that can help me and every time that I've gone to Marcus to help me or my wife to help me He says this, you need to spend more time with God. You need to. You need to. It's in your devotion time. It's in your prayer time. Whatever time of the day it may be, I would encourage you to be in the morning. First thing, first fruits. Because when you take that block of time and you sow it into the kingdom of God, your day will be ten times more productive. I guarantee it. I get like how many people in this room would think that waking up and taking half an hour to spend time with God is just a little too much because I'm too busy in the morning. Whether you have to be to work at four or you don't have to be to work till nine, I would encourage you take a little chunk of time to spend with him. When you fill your soul with God in the morning, he will give you what you need, the mercy you need, the grace that you need to see you through the rest of the day. And you will be more productive. You will be more sufficient in life when you give it to Him. Let's just stay here for a moment. Every eye closed and every head bowed. Just sit right there and just let God speak. God, we long for you to fill our souls. You fill our souls with your word. You work in our souls through your spirit. pray in Jesus' name that as we see the idols that are in our soul, as we see those experiences that are rising up and becoming idols, I just pray in Jesus' name that we would see and identify those idols. We would identify those issues. We would identify them so that way we can be able to dethrone them. As I call my worship team up, I'm going to continue to pray. With our eyes closed and head bowed, identify and dethrone. God, I pray that you would just reveal to us the idols in which we've been holding on to, and even ones that we've been just beating the bush around. Allow us to see the true danger of those little things, the true danger of those idols, and break them down and break them down. 
And these are our next steps for you with every eye closed and every head bowed. I need you to go home or just sit in the presence of God and allow him to identify your idols and destroy them. Destroy them. Because those idols will keep you in places you don't want to be. They'll keep you in despair that breaks you. So identify them and destroy them. Don't listen to their lies. Tell them that they are a liar and send them back to hell. Because Satan is the father of all lies and he speaks his native tongue when he is lying. So don't believe him. Don't believe that spot that you feel. Don't believe that pain that you feel is cancer. Don't believe that that problem you have is permanent. Don't believe that that lust that you have is going to stay there. Believe that Jesus and he who sets free will be free indeed, and they will stay free by the power and by the blood of Jesus Christ. Identify that idol and destroy it. And then after today, I want you to take this entire series to your mentor or your regroup leader and walk through this so that way you can detox your soul. This entire series, I want you to talk about the restless soul, if that's you. I want you to talk about the heavy soul, if that's you. I want you to talk about the tortured soul, if that's you. I want you to talk about every part of your soul. So when we confess our sins one to another, he is faithful and just to forgive us. When we lay out our problems at the cross, he is able to bring us to a complete healing. When we bring those lies to the truth, they will be exposed to bring healing. When we bring our bondage to the one who's got the keys to the kingdom, those chains will fall off. They will fall off. So take this and tell somebody. Walk with somebody. Don't sit with it. Don't wait for it. Make it happen. Make it happen. In Jesus' name.